All right, welcome everybody. Let's continue chapter one. Uh, so here in the next section, or for this video, we have six uh, vocabulary words that we need to get through. Um, so we're going to chunk them into three parts. So for the first part, we'll learn about statistic and a parameter. The second part, we'll talk about discrete and continuous data. And for the third part, we'll talk about experimental and observational study. What I'd like you to do is just take your time, but pause the video first, copy the definition for statistic and parameter, and then we'll move on, right? So going through statistic, um, it is a numerical measurement describing some characteristic of a sample. Parameter is a numerical measurement describing some characteristic of a population, okay? So when we had those vocabulary words before, uh, we had population and sample were the, from the previous lesson. So whenever you see the word statistic, I want you to think about the sample. And for parameter, I want you to think about the population. So let's look at some examples on what these two definitions really mean to get a better feel for it. Um, if you take a look at your worksheet, for me it says answer key and I kind of hid the answers, but uh, let's just go through this worksheet together, okay? Here, uh, let's look at the first question over here. It's saying, in a Harris interactive survey of 2,276 adults in the United States, it was found that 33% of those surveyed never traveled using commercial airlines. Identify the population and the sample. So let's try and do that first before we even go to uh, statistic and parameter, right? Let's ignore this question over here for now. What I'd like you to do is, based on this example here, what is the population and what is the sample? Okay, so I'll pause the video and try and go through it. Um, so for the population, right, it should be uh, all adults, and we have to be specific, it's gonna be in the uh, United States, right? Okay, and the sample here would be the uh, 2,276, uh, adults in the in the survey adults in the Harris interactive survey okay and that's it so remember that idea of population is the big picture idea and the sample is that sub collection within the example that we have all right and for the next part here it's stating that is the value 33% a statistic and a parameter? And just to review, remember the idea of statistic, we have to think every time statistic is gonna be the sample and parameter will be the population. Notice that this 33%, what is it talking about? It's talking about the 33% who were surveyed, right? So take a second, pause the video. Uh, do you believe this 33% is a statistic or a parameter? So let's say you continued, it will be a statistic, right? Um, yeah, because here the 33% is being referred to the sample that was being surveyed. And yeah, so for now, what I'd like you to do is within the next couple of questions, try this on your own. For exercises five through 12, it just states, identify whether the given value is a statistic or a parameter within the example. So we could try and do, if you want, we could do five and six. We could do a few together. And when you feel like you get the hang of it, try and do them on your own, right? So let's take a look at number five together. It states, on the time flights in a study of American airline flights from JFK in New York to LAX in Los Angeles, 48 flights are randomly selected. And the average or the mean arrival time is 8.9 minutes late. So notice, um, what is, let me get this over here. Uh, let's see, let's see. All right, so what is the, what is your data, All right? Notice it's talking about 48 flights. Now notice that these 48 flights, is it talking about all the flights that are happening between JFK and LAX? It's just talking about uh, a sub-collection of it. So notice that this, these 48 flights, this will be a statistic because the 48 flights is a sample within uh, the data given between JFK and LAX, okay? So for here, we'll have a sample. 
I'm sorry, uh, for this one, this will be a statistic. Okay. Let's take a look at number six. Here it states, a recent California health interview survey, CHIS, included 2,799 adolescent residents of California. So notice that this numerical value of 2,799, is this a sample? or is it a population? So pause the video and try and go through it, but this 2,799 is a sample. Thus, that this data value over here, this 2,799 is a statistic. Because here, it's not talking about all the residents of California, it's just talking about the 2,799 who were interviewed, okay? Let's take a look at number seven. Here, housing units. According to the Census Bureau, the total number of housing units in the United States is 132,802,859. So this value of over here, does this value talk about the sample or the population? Okay, and pause the video and try and figure it out. So for this one was statistic. All right. Now here, this, this, this value here talks about all the houses in the United States. So here, we're gonna have an example that will be a parameter, okay? So for number seven, it will be parameter. Let's take a look at number eight. Here, the triangle fire fatalities a deadly disaster in the United States was the Triangle Shirt Waste Factory Fire in New York City. A population, hint, hint, wink, wink, of 146 garment workers died in that fire. So notice that this 146 over here, right? Uh, let me get, hold on, let me pause the video real quick. Let me get something. This 146 this numerical value, it's talking about, um, it's talking about all the workers who died in the fire, thus this 146, the value of it, we're gonna say it's a parameter, okay? Uh, nine, 10, 11, and 12. What I want you to do is try and do these on your own and we'll do them together very soon, right? Try and pause the video and try and do them on your own if you feel like you're getting the feel for it. But here, Number nine, it says birth weight. In a study of 400 babies born in four different hospitals in New York State, it was found that the average mean weight at birth was 3,152 grams. Thus, this, the 400 babies that were born, this is the numerical value. Will this be a statistic or a parameter? This will be a statistic because it's not talking about all the babies that were being born in New York State, it's just talking about uh, a sub-collection of it, okay? Let's take a look at this one. Number 10, birth genders. In the same study cited in the preceding exercise, 51% of the babies were girls. So let's take a look. Um, in the same study cited in the preceding exercise, 51% of the babies were girls. Um, Hmm, let me see. Let me see, statistic. Hmm, what's a good example why? In the same study site. Oh, okay, because here, it's not talking about all the babies that were born, it's just talking about 51% of them. It's saying that 51% of the babies that were born, 51% were girls. Okay. Let's look at number 11. Uh, Titanic. A study was conducted of all 2,223 passengers aboard the Titanic when it sank. So notice that this 2,223, this will be a parameter because this 2,223, it's a parameter because it's talking about all the people who tragically sunk in the Titanic, okay? And let's take a look at the last one. 
here the periodic table the average mean or atomic weight of all elements in the periodic table is 134.355 unified atomic mass units um, this value over here will be a parameter because it's talking about all the all the um, uh, elements within the periodic table okay now let's just double check to see if the answers were correct uh, yeah okay and these were the solutions from 5 to 12 all right good all right so we're done with a third of the class for today let's take a look at the next part okay so again remember we have six definitions so for the first two statistic and parameter we're done with and for the next part we have uh, discrete and continuous data so what do these symbols mean if you know what these symbols represent that's a big thumbs up it's, um, they're not really shown in high school but the idea of discrete and continuous data what I'd like you to do is think about discrete as whole values and think of continuous data as whole values plus everything in between. Okay, so what on earth am I talking about? Um, when we think about discrete data, we have to think of whole values. So when we think of whole values, we have to think of like zero, one, two, three, and so on, right? And that's what this value means. This symbol over here is a set of integers that, um, that are positive. Okay, so then let's not include zero, right? Um, so continuous data are real numbers. So think of like the number line where you have everything between zero and let's say one, right? You have all these values here. So you have 0.5, you have 0.55, and whatever the case may be. So we'll do some examples. What are some examples of discrete data? Think about, let's see. How about uh, number of cars in a parking lot, okay? This scenario of the number of cars in a parking lot will be, let me zoom in a little bit, okay. Number of cars in a parking lot will be, dis will be a discrete value because you can't have like, let's say there are 14 cars in a parking lot, right? You're not gonna have 14 and a half cars. That's not possible. You know, you, only, you have to have a whole value of cars. What's another example of discrete? Uh, number of people in a stadium, right? Let's say you have, you know, 100,000 people in a stadium, right? You can't have like five and a half people. You know, that's just, uh, that's not feasible. You know, you, we're not gonna cut the person in half and say this is half a person. Um, they will die, right? Um, yeah, so that, the idea of discrete, you have to think of whole values, right? What are examples of continuous data? What, is, what are some examples where you have everything in between? Think about, let's say, uh, weight, right? Let's say, I don't know, a person weighs, a person could weigh 155 pounds, or they could weigh 155 point five pounds or 155.53278 pounds okay so whenever you have that whenever you have continuous data you have to think of an example where you have like you you have the whole numbers but you could also have in between the whole numbers okay so what's another example besides weight what I want you to do is pause the video and think about other examples for continuous data and discrete data. And if you want, write them down and we'll go over them in class, right? So weight's a good example. What's another good example? Uh, temperature, right? Uh, it could be 98.5 degrees Fahrenheit outside, or it could be 99.9532 degrees Fahrenheit outside, okay? So that's the idea between uh, discrete and continuous. 
let's do some examples to actually get a better feel for it. So let's do this one. Okay, so we have for the next set of examples between 13 and 20, what is it asking you to do? It states, determine whether the data are from a discrete or continuous data set. Okay, so let's take a look here. Number 13, freshman 15. In a study of weight gained by college students in their freshman year, researchers record the amounts of weight gained by randomly selected students and freshman uh, freshman 15, right? Uh, you'll, you'll understand what that freshman 15 means when you actually go to college, right? <laughs> but um, let's see. So is this idea of weight, would you consider it discrete or continuous data? Right. And we kind of already talked about it, so it's pretty straightforward, but this would be an example of continuous. Let's try another one. Number 14. Here, among the subjects surveyed as a part of a California health interview survey, several subjects are randomly selected and their heights are recorded. So when we're talking about height, is this discrete or continuous data? This will be, you know, pause the video and try and guess for, or go for yourself, but it's continuous data, right? Height is another example that we could put in over here because somebody could be six feet tall or six feet and six, you know, like 6.5 feet tall, all that stuff. So whenever you see that idea of continuous, you got to think of everything in between, right? Try and do the rest by yourself. This is not too bad. Number 15, in a study of service times at a McDonald's drive-up window, the number of cars serviced each hour of several days are record recorded. So notice that for this example, it's stating the number of cars. It's not talking about the time. So the number of cars serviced each hour, notice this would be an example of discrete, right? You can't record half a car. Let's look at number 16. The clerk of a US House of Representatives records the number of representatives present at each session. Okay. Um, so this is talking about representatives at or amount of people. So this would be an example of discrete. Right. Let's look at 17. A shift manager records the number of Corvettes manufactured during each day of production. So if you're talking about number of cars, this will be an example of discrete. You have to have whole values of cars. For criminal forensics, when studying the relationship between lengths of feet and heights so that the footprint evidence at a crime scene can be used to estimate the height of the suspect, a researcher records the exact lengths of feet from a large sample at random subjects. So this will be, notice that we're talking about height and this would be a good example of this is continuous data right smartphones students in a statistic class record the exact lengths of time that are surreptitiously used their smartphones during class um, so notice that time this would be a good example of continuous because you could have you know like you could have one second, 1.5 seconds, 2.5 seconds, yeah. And the last one, texting fatalities. The Insurance Institute of Highway Safety collects data consisting of the number of motor vehicle fatalities caused by driving while texting. So number of fatalities, number of people, this would be uh, discrete values, okay? And that's it. All right. Um, I said I would do six definitions, but let's hold on. What I'll do is I'll just do four definitions for today, and then tomorrow I'll make a short video on experimental and observational study. If you want, you can copy this down right now, but uh, we'll do the final part of this lesson tomorrow. All right, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I will see you tomorrow. Take care.